Hey, what's up guys? I'm going to be making a Rubo style frame saw out of cherry, which is less expensive than if I were to use a 2x4. I'm going to need two 24 inch handles and two 38 and 5 8 inch stretchers. You can see that this board is high in the center and low on the outer edges. I decided not to edit out any of the scrub plane footage because I think that using a scrub plane is probably the most important aspect as far as efficiency when doing stock prep by hand. I wanted to do that because this video in combination with my dovetailed keepsake chest video which shows every single step of stock prep by hand will give a pretty good basic primer on how to get it done. And after having done stock prep with only hand tools for the past seven years in my small garage workshop, I've decided to bring back in a couple of machines to expedite the rough lumber milling process. I try to only use the scrub plane on the high spots, so in this case that means avoiding the outer edges. I tend to avoid traversing the whole face or in any way working the entire face of the board with a scrub plane because I think it's a waste of time, energy, and wood. Once the low spots from my scrub plane are pretty similar to the original low spots of the board, then I switch to the jack plane. I use the jointer plane for final flattening and really the key to getting a flat face no matter what plane you use is just to avoid excessive downward pressure with the hand plane. Check for twist holding the edge of the plane diagonally. Once I think it's flat, confirm it with winding sticks. True face. True edge. I rip these components to size and nearly lose a foot. I position the low end away from me to avoid tear out. I trim down the handle pieces so that it fits just inside the metal bracket. Then I give everything just a quick smoothing pass. Here I trace the outline that I got from the Blackburn Tools website. I mark in a half inch for the tenons, and then mark all the way around. The gauge is set to my half inch mortise chisel. which I then center on the tenon piece and mark it around. I use a pencil line for mortise length rather than a knife line. This way the mortise is what it is and I can trim the tenon to fit rather than trying to have a perfectly sized mortise which is harder to do than trimming a tenon to perfectly sized. I put a depth line on my mortise chisel that's an eighth of an inch deeper than my tenons are long. I chop it out in the usual way and chopping a shallow stub mortise like this can be kind of challenging to avoid damaging the outer edges, but I still prefer not to use a tenon with a cosmetic shoulder to hide the mortise.
And that's it, folks. Done and done. I hit the front, then the back, and it makes it really easy to keep this straight. And same deal when I cut the cheeks. Check the corners, and it's a bit tight, so I'm going to trim it down. Now my corners fit great, but it's still a little bit too wide, so I'm going to have to plane that down. And that's what I was talking about, why I prefer using a pencil line when I'm marking out my mortise length. Now I use a bow saw to cut the rough shape of the handle. Could use a coping saw, but this is pretty thick wood and coping saws really are better for like one inch stock or less. Bevel down chisel for inside curves. Level up for outside curves. Next, it's onto the spoke shape to start evening things out. Level up. Bevel down. Next I chop out and install a bearing plate. I hit that with a hammer just so it knows who's boss. Before doing a final sanding and applying a finish, I really wanted to just put this together and give it a test drive. So as you guys can see here, this thing has huge teeth. It's like, I think it's three and a half points per inch or something like that. And to be honest, I have no idea if this is supposed to cut on the push or on the pull. Uh, I don't think it really matters since the tension is gonna be directly through the blade. I'm gonna put it on the push stroke and see how that goes because you're either cutting down the grain or up the grain. And by cutting on the push stroke, I'll be able to cut with the grain, so like it's very easy to cut with the grain. Whereas cutting against the grain, even small teeth, 
it gets stuck and it's really hard to cut down the grain. So I think it'll be easier to cut this on the push stroke because if I was on the pull to go with the grain, I'd have to like pull up at an angle, which would be really hard to do. Whereas on the push stroke, if I'm cutting down a piece of wood, I'll be able to cut with the grain by dropping my hands, which will be a lot easier to do than trying to pull up in some sort of awkward fashion. I can't quite grab it. I think it's being held up, so I'm gonna have to round over those corners. And I'm just gonna thin that out just a little bit too. Much better. So it fits a little better now. Need it around those corners over a little bit. I may go back and sand this out a little bit better, but I just want to get this put together right now. Ooh. It's a big bad boy right here. I'm glad I went with the 36 inch and not the 48. That would have been way too big. I've never used this saw before, so I'm gonna give it a shot, see how it goes. Here's just a little over four inch piece of wood. Most of the time resawing, I've seen people resaw like this, but even with my five and a half point saw, anytime I've resawed, I always go into the bench uh, because when it's clamped in like this, it tends to slide around a little bit. And I'm not gonna, I'm not going to start the curve or anything like that with another saw. I'm just going to go for it and see what happens. I need more. Sp oh, I need a hell of a lot more space behind me. Yeah, I'm going to have to figure something out because I don't have nearly enough space. absolutely awesome this thing just eats the wood now if I'm getting good video footage here I mean just a couple strokes and this is only a little over four inches of walnut but dude it I mean it's just sinking down it's just chewing that wood up and it wasn't all that hard to start but uh, Like I said, I th if anyone knows whether this is supposed to be a push or pull, let me know. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna do push stroke because it seems like that'd be fine to do. The tension's directly through the blade. Um, and by cutting on the push, I'll be able to uh, cut you know, with the grain because it's easy to start a saw cut. Like I said, it's easy to start a saw cut going with the grain. Whereas if you're going against the grain, the teeth just dig into it and it's really hard to do. Uh, and if I was cutting this on the pull, then I'd have to like pull upwards or whatever. And by cutting it on the push, I can cut with the grain by just dropping it down low like that. I'm too tight on space. I need to figure out a better situation because I'm only taking advantage of maybe like half of this blade. Like I said, I've never used this before, so 
if I look like a newbie trying to use this frame saw, I, I am. Um, but I figured I'd try it for the very first time uh, on camera, I don't care. Couldn't be worse than the first time I tried cutting a board regularly with a handsaw. But I'm gonna see if I can just cut this thing right in half. It's, there's, no, there's no surface, there's no flat face on this board. I didn't mark it with a marking gauge or anything. It's just, I'm just going for it. And so to start the cut, since I'm not starting with the saw curve, I'm just gonna go very lightly and try to get it started. take a lot of caution as I'm getting close to connecting those two. If I connect them correctly, that'll be a, close to a miracle. But I really don't want to blow past this because this would just chew up my bench top. So I'm connected on the side I'm on and looks like I'm a little bit off on that side. Go see how it looks. Not great, but not terrible. I was expecting worse than that, to be honest. That is really, really going to be a big time saver for resawing. Between this frame saw and this bow saw, You've got the basic functionality of a bandsaw. Uh, it wouldn't be nearly as accurate, fast, or as versatile. But, I mean, bandsaws, you can do straight line cuts, you could cut dovetails, you can do pretty much anything on a bandsaw. But you've got the two main functionalities with that bow saw and that frame saw uh, cutting curves and resawing. And I think I'm going to take this apart. I might sand this up a little bit more and apply a finish. I'm really, really happy with the way this thing turned out. It's pretty easy to make and I haven't done, I haven't done any curves like that in a while, so that was kind of fun to do.